Live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE. Covering Samsung Developer Conference 2017. Brought to you by Samsung. Okay, welcome back everyone. Live here in San Francisco, this is theCUBE's exclusive coverage of Samsung Developer Conference, SDC 2017. I'm John Furrier, the co-founder of SiliconANGLE Media, co-host of theCUBE. My next guest is James Stansberry, SVP, Senior Vice President, General Manager of Arctic IoT of Samsung, AR Kit, Arc Kit, whatever you want to call it, it is the IoT piece keynote presenter today. Thanks for spending the time, thanks for coming on. It's my pleasure, John, thanks for having us. So we love the IoT story, we cover it heavily across all of our other, other shows we come to, but now as the edge of the network becomes human and machines, you guys have the devices, you have the home, you have the smart thing strategy, Everything's a device, it's everything to everything now. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, most people think of Samsung as a consumer electronics company. Uh, what Arctic actually is, is a enabling platform to enable other devices. So we build an end-to-end -end IoT platform, which includes the cloud, and today we um, rebranded we re it the SmartThings cloud, down into um, network devices, gateways, and end nodes. So we actually enable not just Samsung products, but we enable other companies' products to be connected to the internet, almost regardless of the market, not even consumer. So John, uh, Thomas Co was on earlier talking about this open strategy, which is great, and he was very humble. He's like, look, we're going to be honest and transparent. This is the new Samsung way. We're going to be called the developers. We're going to be completely open. We're not going to try to lock you into Samsung, although we have you know, some intelligence and the tips and whatnot, which is cool. And I think that's going to be, that's going to play well with the developer. Mm -hmm. But you introduced something that was pretty compelling on stage, and this is, to me, the key observation from the Cube team is the security module. Yeah. Take us through specifically what you announced and what does it mean to the, uh, uh, the, to the developer community and what is the impact? Okay, and before I do that, let me just talk about what, what's happening to security. We, we all know about Mirai and WannaCry and these things just keep happening. And in order for us to be able to stop the, these, these, uh, these threats, we have to up the level in security. And what we announced today was uh, a, an end-to-end -end security platform that utilizes the hardware that we supply connected to our cloud and overlaying it on top of this hardware cloud platform and abstracting it in such a way that it's easy to implement. But it's an end-to-end -end security and it contains all the major components you need to be able to secure an IOT network. And from basically down network, and I can explain it more if you'd like. Yeah, well so down network means from the device. From the so cloud could, actually. Or, or from the device through the cloud. The question that people will ask is, and this is what I'd love to get you an explanation on is, they don't want silos. They want to have the horizontally scalable nature of the cloud, mm -hmm. but they want the specialism of the IoT device. So some software could be an AR application that could be a virtual interface into a, a cell tower or whatever mm -hmm. that's being done. We've seen those all the time. But I don't want, I want, to, I want a full stack, but I don't want to be locked in. So mm -hmm. I want to move to something smart thing over there. All right. How do you guys enable that well, security? You know, yeah, you? it's really important. You know, you, um, with the security, you don't, we don't create any proprietary solutions. As a matter of fact, if you look at how we've, we've implemented it, we use third party partners uh, and we use standards. For example, um, how we do a secure over the air update to an EndNode device, we actually use a standard piece of software that's, that's specified by a standard called LWM2M. Most people, embedded designers, will know what this yeah. is. Uh, we use a public key infrastructure. Uh, we know, we use a well-known code signing capability. Uh, we use FPGA kind of uh, thing, field programmable gate arrays. No, 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 no. In terms of the the the, the code signing, I'm talking about. If, if I write a piece of code and I want to authenticate that it's the code that I wrote that's on the device a year from now, I, I'll create a hash, store the hash, when I boot it, I compare that hash and make sure it's no one has modified it. By the way, it's a known hack. You yeah. know, you're inserting yeah. bad malicious code on a device. That's <laughs> one of the things you want to avoid. Um, and then, you know, the other, the other thing we use is very standardized encryption. You know, we use TLS, part of uh, you know the HTTPS standard, and in that we use very well-known uh, cryptography. Um, the other thing we do is um, we we create a hardware root of trust using a secure element. These are the same devices that are used in smart cards today. It's not new science. It's just 
in the smart way to do it, to, to actually create a root of trust. What would you say if, um, if someone who's new to Samsung, maybe watching here today, um, obviously knows that Samsung brand, because you guys now are expanding the brand across the, the, the platform and the fabric of Samsung, you're seeing it here in the smart home, kitchen example, smart TVs, it's all over the place. There's no doubt what Samsung is. Mm -hmm. Explain the premise of the IoT strategy, and what the goals are, what the objectives, and how does that relate to maybe someone's impression of Samsung oh, that yeah. they know? So, you know, um, I'll, I'll, maybe, I'll maybe give some insight in, inside Samsung. Um, maybe people don't realize that we really are an IoT company in, in, a mul in many ways, because inside our factories, we use IoT to run our smart factories. So we actually are a consumer. Um, we made the, we made the, um, we set the goal of connecting all of our devices by 2020, our consumer products. So in order to be, you know, IOT is connected devices. What Arctic does uh, is it's actually a platform that is not necessarily consumer focused, but brings IOT to markets like smart factories, uh, commercial buildings, healthcare, home appliances. It's actually multifaceted. Mm -hmm. and, and not just Samsung products. We enable devices that are non-Samsung to, to create their own ecosystem or connect to our, our ecosystem. So headline on siliconangle.com today is, is timely for you. And I, want, I put it in context because it might have a little bit more range on the IoT side, but uh, one of our managing editors, Paul Gillen, writes the story, who owns the data from the Internet of Things, question mark, that's about to become a very big deal. Hmm. So it's kind of provocative, who owns the IoT data, that's about to become a big deal. Like I've read the article, what he's basically saying to is, you got vehicles out there that are connected, you got smart things everywhere now. That's a great so, question. The, the, and there's also, what do you do with the data? Do you move compute to the data? Do you move data across the network? These are physics questions, these are architectural questions, that's in the, in the bigger scheme, maybe outside the scope of STC, but lend, a, a, a pointer to what's happening at the edge. Okay, so you know, first of all, you have to define the data, <laughs> right? I mean, there's personally identified data, and then there's data that's been extracted from that. Um, and I think that you're going to see some regulation around it, especially in Europe, defining exactly what that is. Uh, from a Samsung perspective, I think it's pretty clear. We believe that the consumer owns the data. Uh, if we ever use it, it's being done with, with the consumer's permission. Yeah. And then, then I think that's, that's a very clear. key word, yeah. permission based. Oh, of course, and I think that that's where most regulation's going to go, and I think that's where the industry yeah. will generally go. That's and that's personally Europe. identified. A, personally yeah, identified. their information. Yeah. But you also got to balance out the openness of data. This is the, this is the, the GPRS kind of debate, right? Which is, you want to have a strict policy to protect the person's data, at the same time offer organic ways to provide a great user experience yeah. with the data. And you you fuel the experience with data, but the protection, it's a hard problem. Okay. And it's even more complicated because individually, some people are more open about the consumption of their data than other people. And what that actually means is the individuals have to start to manage their data. And yeah. so what does that mean? Everybody has a web portal and <laughs> says, I have this, I give this level? I mean, I don't know. And yeah. so that's actually one of the unanswered questions is how does a consumer yeah. manage their own data and other people's access Well, to we it? think, on our indications, we're kind of directionally looking at the future, we think this is where blockchain is relevant. Not so much the Perhaps. cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin or Ethereum, but blockchain is an immutable, decentralized, it's Not just distributed, decentralized. It's one way to actually keep track of what they're what they're allowing, but at some yeah. point they have to specify, <laughs> and I think that there's the trick. Yeah, and uh, this is this is the fun part about tech is it looks a lot of promise, looks good off the tee as they yeah. say in golf, but there's off chain and on chain dynamics in terms of mining Bitcoin. I, if, in the meantime, I think people are just going to opt in. Yeah, and, you know that's yeah. how they, they give perm permission. Well, where society is impacting, we're seeing this big time with IoT. These are these are norms that are coming. Mm -hmm. This is a, a yet to be written chapter. Yeah. Well, we're, we're going to see, you mentioned GPRS, yeah. and they are going to regulate it. There will be the people who have to manage it. We'll see how that works. Yeah. And you know, we'll probably evolve from that. Into well, it's something. the Y2K problem of our generation. Yes, because it is. there's consequences to that, that regulation. Yeah, it'll Big probably time. go as well as Y2K, <laughs> which didn't go bad. It's going to be a disaster. Yeah, it's going to yeah. be a disaster. I'll say it, it's going to be a disaster. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it puts extra pressure on companies, especially ones that are using yeah. cloud. So I think this would be an example where Samsung SmartThings cloud might be helpful. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is the big security. Do we need a do-over? Probably yes. Well, you know, what we will do is we will do everything we can to secure their data. And again, going back to, you know, if they, if they choose to allow us or to provide the data to someone, someone to use it, then that's up to them. But we will do everything we can to secure it on the device, in the network, and in our cloud. 
I mean, people are things. We're walking around with things like this. That's a device, that's a Samsung, that's a J phone. <coughs> I got to get the, the better phone, so working on that uh, today. Uh, we'll get the Samsung, great new, new phones. Yeah. I mean, that's entertainment, that's e-commerce, that's web services kind of rolled into one. That's essentially what the smart things is about, pretty oh, much, right? Absolutely is, absolutely is. Yeah, on the consumer side, I would say, but, but I would say IoT is more than just consumer. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's healthcare, it's in hospitals, it's in factories, it's going to be in your car, yeah. it's in autonomous vehicles, you know, it's going well, to be Well, we coined the term here on theCUBE, I think I did, and E to E. Everything to everything. Yes. B to B is boring to boring, consumer to consumer is okay. old, and so you bring them together, it's everything to everything, exciting to exciting. I just, you know, we, we describe <laughs> our business model as B to B, so I guess I, I <laughs> off the, I'll, well, I'll take it. I'll well, I mean, it. look at B two B marketing. I'm not, I'm not particularly about marketing. <laughs> no, but it's tech. Boring is. I mean, look at Facebook. Their slogan was "Move fast, break stuff." Yeah. To "Move fast, make sure it's secure." Yeah. I mean, boring is secure. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So, but B two B is exciting. You got augmented reality. Yeah. You got cloud computing. I mean, literally unlimited potential compute power that's available through cloud. In the data so, center, sure. I mean, it's certainly transformative for, for mm -hmm. enterprises. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so we, we think it's going to be pretty exciting. Yeah. I personally think, I mean, I just think, I just don't like the B2B thing, but that's us. <laughs> All right, anything else you'd like to share with the audience here on the uh, event here, observations, what's well, your thoughts? I, I think, you know, by the way, I, 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 again, I appreciate the opportunity. I think the, the really important thing here, and maybe Thomas mentioned this, is you know, Samsung's integrating basically five clouds together, and these are coming from mobile, from visual, display from digital appliances to smart things to Arctic and, and being a maker of devices and then having this open Arctic platform really, yeah. I believe, is going to position Samsung in a very unique way in, in IoT. Not just for our own products, but for people to interact with our products and create new services. So, I'm really excited about I think about the it. ecosystem opportunity is big too. I mean, one of the things we're seeing with, uh, in the cloud community here in North America, and, and starting to see it in, in China with Alibaba, is hardware configurations are now being dictated by the workload. Yeah. So what's happening is hardware stacks, technology and hardware, are being configured. Say, for example, storage might be configured differently based upon the latency requirements. Of, Absolutely. Of, so now you have hardware stacks that are, haven't been tested at scale. This is a huge issue mm -hmm. in enterprise, because if they have multiple clusters for, say, a data lake, and then a real-time in-memory cluster, we'll see how it who all tested scales. that? Yeah. This is where I think the opportunity on the hardware side is interesting. Okay. Your well, thoughts on that? Uh, not necessarily on the data center side. I was actually th thinking about on, on, on the network side with compute moving to the edge. You know, what we ended up having to do is we, we actually created Arctic Zeros, which are these low compute single protocol devices for in node devices like lights, mm -hmm. and then an Arctic 357, which are uh, dual processing core, quad core processing core, and octo processing core, just because of this, this the, the variations in the type of computation that has to be done actually in the network. Uh, because the applications for IoT are from extremely low power to extremely high compute. And in some cases, we see uh, AI machine learning coming yeah. to the edge. Yeah. And that's, a, that's just totally off the scale to do inference. Yeah. At the you edge. could put the data center at the edge. I mean, at some point. It's coming. It's coming. It's the fabric coming. and it, it's you know, a tide. volatile memory. It's moving, going to move up the cloud. And it's no come virtual back down. machines, non volatile memory at the edge. Mm -hmm. Fabrics are going to be out there. It's the cube bringing you all the data here at SDC 2017 with James Stansberry, who's the Senior Vice President General Manager of Samsung IoT. I'm John Furrier. More Cube coverage after the short break.